summer time. So maybe let me tackle the last question, the youth. No, let's start with the ZANU issue. I was, uh, <laughs> I've never been a member of ZANU. <laughs> gentlemen at the back, I've never been a member of ZANU. I was a member of President Mugabe's cabinet. <laughs> I was brought in as a non-partisan member, as a, what they call the technocrat. I left because I could see what was going on and that's what I've been proven to be right. I went to the president and I told him the way he was going was going to destroy the country. We spent what people don't know. You've been told that I resigned from Johannesburg, which is not true. I went on the day I flew out of this country. I spent one and a half hours with the president, telling him I was leaving. And in all that time, he tried to persuade me to stay. And I said, no, I'm not staying. Because I can see nothing is going to change. Incidentally, I'm going to share with you something I've not shared with anybody before. I looked the president in the eye and I told him that his legacy would prove that he did not care about Zimbabweans. He did not answer me. He looked at me and said nothing. And I left and left the country. Where have I been? I don't think the environment has been conducive for me to do anything in this country up to now. But I did not waste my time. I went and spent my time learning about the economy, about finance. I worked in, at the World Bank, as you know. I worked in investment. I worked in industry. I worked as an investor. I invested in virtually all of the African countries out of London. So I understand how an economy works. I understand how banks work. I have actually run them. I've run banks. Here in Zimbabwe, I run Standard Chartered Bank. In Tanzania, I run Standard Chartered Bank. I sat on the board of banks in, in Nigeria, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda. So I understand how these things work. So excuse me when I say, you want to fix an economy, don't put a lawyer. I am sorry, I'll repeat it time and time again. Okay? The same way that when you want to repair the electrical system, you don't go and get a plumber to do it. It's exactly the same. Just a digression. The education system in this country worked. You, do, you know, do you know why it worked? It worked because Mugabe was a teacher. He understood education and he fixed education. Omzila, by the way, with all due respect, I'm our vets. They fought a war very successfully for all of us. But they do not know how to run an economy. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. So let's move on. They did a very good job. We should thank them and we'll forever be grateful to them. What they do not know is how to run an economy. We should move on from that. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. But the youth, let me answer the youth. Please, we've yeah. run out of yeah, time. Yeah, 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 but I'm here, so might as well be. It's a very important question. So the challenge, actually, is not to us. The challenge is to you. You know, no matter how imperfect a democracy is, it is majoritarian. Okay? So you, as a majority, are you very clear about what Zimbabwe you want to create? Are you talking to each other to decide who you should vote for? And stop beating up people, being sent by us to beat them up. You should mobilize young people because of your numbers. The outcome of this election, if you made up your minds, would be a decided issue. There is no other option other than you putting your heads together and deciding what kind of Zimbabwe you want to build and then voting for the right person to do it with you. Thank you.